On March 11, 2011, Japan was faced by the off the Pacific coast of Tohoku earthquake. Studies have found out the Tohoku land block along the Japan Trench slid approximately 50 meters horizontally toward the east and rose as high as 10 meters. What caused this extensive tectonic deformation? Investigations were carried out for the several months starting in April 2012 to shed light on the factors that led to the occurrence of the Great Earthquake. The expedition team had to face a number of difficulties as they were confronted with the unprecedentedly challenging mission. Nevertheless, they successfully achieved their goals of taking rock samples from the plate boundary fault and install a long-term borehole observatory consisting of temperature sensors. Welcome to Jumpstick Presents Discover the Future, QTV. I'm your host, Sasha. On this program, we have reported about the expeditions of deep-sea drilling vessel HQ, aimed at finding out the mechanism of the 2011 off the Pacific coast of Tohoku earthquake. In 2012, the expedition team successfully took core samples off the plate boundary fault that lies about 1,000 meters beneath the ocean floor, which is already 7,000 meters deep in the water and managed to install an observatory which measures frictional heat remaining in the fault. In April 2013, nine months after the installation, Chiu was out there again to recover the observatory. The task of installing it was faced by a hurdle after another. How about the task of recovering it? Was the observatory brought back on board without any difficulty? Was the observatory able to record frictional heat as intended? You will find out the answers to these questions in this episode. So now let's get started with SKU TV. SKU TV. TV. When the great earthquake happened off Tohoku, Japan several years ago, we thought it was very important that scientists provide some good information about what was, during, what was happening during the earthquake, especially the very large slip that happened on the shallow portion of the fault and created the great tsunami that did so much damage on the northeast coast. We thought about what is it that we can learn, and some of the things that we thought about were to really explain this large slip, we needed to know the level of friction, we needed to know the conditions on the fault, and so these were the things, these were the main objectives of the JFAST project to drill to the fault, to put in temperature sensors to measure the frictional heat, and to get a sample to really understand and to observe the, the physical conditions of the fault. So immediately following the earthquake, within about one year, we made plans to carry out this project, which then resulted in the JFAST project. And now, um, a, two years later, we've collected some good data and hoping to be able to really understand the processes that happened during this great earthquake. サンティコキ東部では北西の風が強く最大風速は昨年の7月からJFAST の公開が始まって、いろいろと苦難を乗り越えてですね、最終的には7月に温度計の潜水アレイを設置することに成功しました。そこから校内での温度観測を継続して今約7ヶ月は経っているんですが、7000メートルまで潜れるROV海溝を使ってこの校内に設置した温度計のアレイを回収するということを行います。最初聞いた時は耳を疑うぐらいの難しいオペレー
見することすらできませんでした結果を反省しまして我々開口チームと j ファーストの回収チームでいろいろと作戦を練ってきました一つには海底地形をより精密に把握するために海溝に装備したサイドスキャンソナーとそれからサブボトムプロファイラーで海底地形探査を行いました。今回の調査に関しては、今までは捜索を最初にやっていたんですけれども、やはりあの思った以上に船の上から取れる地形だけではわからない複雑な様子をしていることが分かりました。で、そのためにジェファーソン周辺の海底の地形の状況ですね、それをきちんと把握することがまず一つ。それでその情報をもとに実際の捜索選考、回収選考の作戦を立てると。いうデータにするということになっています。もっと広い範囲でジェファーストをもう一回確実にポジションをつかもうということですね。日本列島でこっちが海溝、えー、北と地球の掘削ポイントとその南側をこのように三本。今、この真ん中が今、自分のピークルの位置になっていて、そこから右舷側と左舷側にオッパーを出しています、でそれの,あの反射の具合をまあ絵にしたものが、まあ、このプロッターの図とこちらの画面になります、まずは生データで見つつ、えー、捜索をしてで、最終的にはあのソフトウェア上で綺麗なあのマップにするという作業を今後、先行の後に行っていくことになると思います。えっと、一昨日の選考はです、ね、2つの音響機器を使った調査を実施しましたこの側線開口が進んで側線からちょうどここで、えっと、250m ぐらいのこの位置にちょっと周囲の海底と少し違う反射の様子を示すエリアがありますでこれを、えっと、過去の位置データと合わせて見てあげると地球があの掘削工に機械をインストールした時その時の船の位置で決めた場所と比較的よく一致する場所にちょっと怪しげな反射の状況を示す提出が見て取れるともう一つ地層を調べるソナーマークついていましてその結果はこちら側の図面になります地球ので決めた繊維の北側のエリアというのは少し平たくなっていることがわかりますでこういうエリアで掘削したというふうなお話も聞いているので、まあ、この場所というのは、えー、掘削のある位置というふうに考えてもいいのではないかなと今のところ考えてまいります。J ファーストの MTL ハンガーのアイプレートを発見したらこのフックで引っ掛けますこのフックはロープにつながられていてこちらのバネとロードセルに接続されております基本的にはこのロードセルで MTL のアッセンブリーを作っている荷重を計測しますこの下についているのは 850m の観測システムがついていますから当然その下を開口のカメラで追うことはできませんから、釣ってることを知る手段としては、このボードセルの表示を頼りにします。
解雇、これより上昇開始します。一時テーブル巻き取り。よく頑張った開口中会社やこいつは渡しますこれは<笑>すげえこんなの書いてるなじゃあ、you can go home now <笑>いやもう感無量ですよ入れる時から上げる時まで苦労した人のみんなのね、血と汗と涙の結晶ですから
So from the sensors, we get both pressure in for some of them and temperature in all of them. And the temperature is measured at very high precision and um, over time uh, with very um, short time steps in between. So we can see with very uh, high precision what the temperature is at many depths through um, the ocean seafloor and across the fault over time. Uh, it's very exciting and unique data set. So this data provides a picture of what the temperature looks like across the fault zone after the earthquake. And um, it kind of tells us how the, the earthquake affected the temperature and uh, what types of uh, stress or friction was on the fault during the major slip event, major earthquake. え、one of the main purposes of the JFAS project is to measure the frictional level during this great earthquake. And by friction we mean how easily does the fault slip or how difficult does the fault slip. So for example, if the friction is very low, then this part can just slip and maybe is slipping between earthquakes or it's always slipping very slowly. Um, if that's the case though, then it would mean that there's no stress buildup and it's hard for it to have very large slip during the earthquake. One way to get around that though is if there's a large slip for the deeper part and even though there is no stress buildup on the shallow part, this part can just go along for the ride. It can just be a continuation of the bigger slip that's happening at depth. On the other hand, if the friction is high, it means the fault does not slip very easily maybe there actually is very large stress building up on the shallow portion. If that's the case, then this part will build up stress and will have big slip when the earthquake occurs. So this is the normal explanation. This is how we think uh, most big earthquakes happen. This is quite different for um, the Tohoku earthquake because until this earthquake happened, we thought that probably this area would not have big slip during the earthquake. And how does that really affect this big slip that happened on this portion of the fault that we did not expect big slip to happen before the earthquake? And this is important because it's the very large slip on the shallow portion of the fault that generated the very large tsunami. And we need to know this because there's a lot of associated problems. So for example, does it take a thousand years to build up the stress? Or can this kind of slip happen easily even if stress is not building up? In the same way, is this unique to Tohoku, or are there similar conditions on other parts of uh, other subduction faults, such as Nankai or Cascadia? And so understanding the frictional level and understanding the way the fault slips, how easily or hard, really tells us about tsunami generation for the Tohoku earthquake and other great earthquakes around the world. Skew TV. This project would not have been successful without the dedication of all the people involved. The Recovered Observatory represents a fruition of their toil. This comment by Dr. Kyo tells us how hard it was to bring the project to success. The observatory will expectedly give us new insights that may change our understanding of earthquakes. Chikyu TV will keep an eye on the research toward understanding the mechanisms of great subduction earthquakes. Jumpstick presents Discover the Future, Chikyu TV. See you next time. I'm your host, Sasha. Bye-bye.